guys and welcome back to my channel so this is the first video i am sitting down and filming in 2018 and i'm really excited about this because i just bought a bunch of new tech so i finally sort of streamlined everything i bought lesser things but better things that are going to help me make better content and i wanted to bring more tech related videos onto this channel for a while because i really really enjoy technology i enjoy geeking out about camera equipment and stuff i enjoy researching and watching reviews and all that and since i just upgraded a lot of things i thought i'll talk you through everything i bought like why i bought it why i chose it what are the good things about it and also what are the cons of it because no one piece of technology is perfect and there are always going to be like little faults this is like my new vlogging setup i know this is a very cliche ac nice that type of setup but i guess it works new camera new lens new filters on the lens new mic on the camera new mini bendy gorilla pod thingy there are also a couple of things around me i guess that i'm going to have to cover before we get started i do have a couple of things i want to mention though the first thing is the setup that i'm going to show you the camera and equipment and all that it's not a beginner setup uh, it's definitely one that's on the pricier side and it's just that i've been blogging for a very long time and <laughs> blogging and also that i'm able to create most of my content in house and also blogging and blogging is uh, my full time profession so i just want to have the best tech possible if you guys want me to talk about beginner setup sometime i can definitely do that also so please let me know everything in this video is bought pretty newly within the last week or couple of weeks everything has been bought online i guess on amazon except for the camera itself everything i'm going to mention is going to be listed in the description bar below so you can go click on those links and check out the current prices accordingly so the first thing that is the biggest part of this haul has to be the camera itself this is the sony alpha 6500 before this for over a year but less than a year and a half i've used the sony alpha 6000 which is what this video is being filmed on i was a canon person pretty much a fangirl for the longest time and all of my dslrs used to be canon but i found that they were lacking a lot of innovation in the video making sphere till i was using my camera for only photos it was working out great but when i was using for videos it did have a flip screen which was nice but i found a lot of deficiencies in the continuous autofocus if you watch some of my old videos you'll see that the autofocus on the camera the canon camera keeps on shifting even when it shouldn't be even when there's not much movement like a lot of things were sort of pushing me away from canon and it's really difficult when you have bought like one system whether you have canon whether you have nikon whether you have sony to actually switch to a completely different system just because uh, you've invested not only in the camera but you've invested in additional lenses which only work with these cameras in uh, sort of mid to late 2016 i thought about it for a very long time did a bunch of of research i never make any purchase of this kind without doing a lot of research on my own and i couldn't be happier it cost me extra money because i had to buy like all new lenses but the thing that i love about sony is that it's equally good for photo and video and i can just use like the one camera for everything whether it's blog shoots if you see like the pictures in my blog that i'm usually pretty impressed with whether it's these videos sony is actually working out really well for me and i like that it's so small also the a6000 and the a6500 pretty much have the same shape and form factor so it's just a lot smaller than your clunky dslr now you can say that dslrs are more ergonomic they're easier to hold but i'm just really a lot happier with this one sony absolutely kills it in video autofocus from the first time i started using this camera i was so so impressed with the autofocus it never jumps but if i want it to shift it shifts so easily let me show you guys what i'm talking about so this is like my journal i just put it here and it quickly catches focus on the journal but i just remove it and really quickly it comes back to my face without having any problem so some of the reasons that i finally upgraded up 
through the A6500, I actually made a list. The good thing is that it's small, which the 6000 also had, but this has a lot more features than the 6000. The autofocus, again, 6000 autofocus also very good, but 6500 even better. Really, really impressive autofocus that's very quick and almost never wrong. I already touched on the photo video point basically this is a versatile camera i no longer want to have like a different camera for stills and a different camera for sit down videos and a different vlogging camera i want like one camera to just do all of these things very well and fit every purpose and the 6500 is going to be that for me like i have the gopro for just some some time pass shots but basically all of the main work that i do is just going to be on this camera I have a smaller vlogging camera that I basically don't use. I just do all vlogs on this camera rather than that camera. <laughs> now it's going to be this camera. So just all in one is something that seals the deal for me. The Sony cameras have this really excellent remote app. So on the A6000, I could only use the remote app to take photos. On the A6500, I'll be able to use the remote app for photos and videos. And that means that I can just self shoot a lot of my content. Now I'm really dependent on my mum and I'm really lucky that she helps. But the remote app means that even if I'm traveling alone, I can frame and do my own content myself. Just after I bought that camera, I went to Sri Lanka on a trip and I took a lot of photos there, like in the balcony myself. And I was really impressed with how those pictures came out. So the remote app, which is called Play Memories, which works on both iPhone and Android, just helps a lot another pro of course is this camera has something called ibis or in body image stabilization the 6000 does not and what that means is it's sort of like it's got video stabilization built in around the sensor so that's going to minimize the shake when you first start taking videos everyone ends up shaking a lot and you have to learn ways to uh, shake less uh, when you're taking video while moving so you're walking on the road so this camera has that built-in stabilization that is not going to take the place of an external stabilizer i have one of those but it's just going to make the day-to-day -day vlogging a little bit smoother now i'm going to tell you a few cons of this camera also these are things that you should consider before buying the a6500 the batteries on these cameras are not very good and if you're going to be vlogging a lot in the day especially if you're shooting on 4k which i don't think i'll be doing a lot of but uh, this camera depletes batteries really quickly i like that i can just charge it with a power bank it just takes micro usb i think it's good to keep that in mind for my canon battery used to last so long because it was a gigantic battery and with this i do need to charge it like every day without fail shooting if you're doing a lot of work in a day you might have to keep in mind that and purchase uh, some separate extra batteries and always carry them with you another con of this camera is it, it had an overheating issue because of its small size sometimes in the heat if you run it for very long like if i'm filming a video like this where i'm sitting down and talking for like 18 minutes without a break uh, it might warn me and then shut off because the camera internal parts gets overheated but that issue is supposed to be largely solved in the latest firmware and i have the latest firmware i don't think it's a very big deal anymore but again if you're using this type of a camera for client work if you're doing like interviews or something where you're going to need to keep it on a long time this is something you should consider not a very big deal for me also it doesn't have a flip screen which i'm now used to flip screen is so useful for vloggers though and i miss having like a little screen where i could just see how things were framed but i can use my phone app and frame with that now so it's not a big con for me but i know a lot of vloggers would want a flip screen and this camera sadly does not have it and the final two cons for this are uh, it's a pretty expensive camera i have researched it and i know it's well built and it's going to serve me very well but i still feel that it's a little bit on the overpriced side and it could have been brought down a little less this camera is also body only i bought the lens separately and i have sony compatible lenses so that's not an issue but if you spring for the money to buy this camera know that you're not going to get any lens with it no kit lens so you're going to have to buy either a sony lens or a sigma lens you're not going to get anything with the camera itself now that we fully discussed the camera the next thing i'm going to talk about is this brand new lens 
It's the Sigma 16mm 1.8 DCDN lens. It's not made by Sony but by Sigma, but it's a Sony compatible lens and one that works perfectly with the camera. Sony cameras are known for their really good autofocus, so of course the big question on everyone's mind is are third-party lenses going to have that same kind of really good autofocus? But I have the Sigma 30mm DCDN on my camera right now and I've noticed that the autofocus is still absolutely excellent. I don't find any kind of deficiencies in it and I've already demonstrated it a bit earlier in this video. One of the criticisms that uh, the Sony Alpha series gets because it's newer than say Canon or Nikon is that it doesn't have a lot of lenses out and the lenses are pricier. I would have to agree. However, brands like Sigma are stepping in and making quality glass. So the thing that I love about this lens is it's a 16mm so it's actually pretty wide. It's not going to be exactly 16mm because this is a crop sensor camera not a full frame. The equivalent will be a little different but it's a really good vlogging lens and it also has a maximum aperture of f1.8 which means that the aperture opens up very wide that's what makes it a fast lens and that means that you're going to be able to get a lot of bokeh every time you shoot you'll get that really aesthetic blurred background and that very cinematic look that you don't get with a lot of lenses i've just used this a little bit but i'm very very impressed with it it's a pretty new lens and i was watching a lot of review videos of it here on youtube everybody seemed to be very very impressed with this lens and I'm just loving the results that it's giving. I'm also vlogging with this lens today. So if you hop on over to my vlog channel, you can press the I in the upper right corner. You can see a vlog of this entire day of today, which I've completely filmed on this camera and on this lens. So you can see how the lens performs and how it looks. I do have an ND filter on it right now just because of the really wide aperture. If I want to use it in the daytime, I need to put a filter on it but also I can use it in the night time and it will take in a lot of light so even in dark spaces I'll be able to film nicely and I'm really excited to push this lens to the limits. Few cons of course like every other lens first is that it this is a prime lens so though it's really big it doesn't zoom at all it's fixed focal length it's just 16 mm you can't manually go in or go out if you want a different frame you're going to like have to place your camera at a different spot and then the next two biggest cons of this lens is it's really large and really heavy I think this is the largest and heaviest lens I've ever had so it still performs very well and I think it's like an engineering masterpiece but I may not use this lens like on a daily basis for vlogging I'll probably use it for travel vlogs because I don't mind taking that little extra effort to get very cinematic results but it's just a little heavy and a little big for everyday kind of use but it's still an excellent lens and I love that these Sigmas are so easily available in India at least online and you get warranty and everything I also got a lens hood with it uh, which you can put on the outside here but lens hood is just to protect your lens from flares so I don't think it's really necessary it looks cool but I don't think I'm going to use it but you just get it included with the lens which is a really nice touch when I don't have the ND filter on I always put a UV filter on my lens that's like photography 101 whenever you buy any new camera any new lens always have a UV filter on it at all times so what the filter does is it's supposed to protect uh, your photographs from the effects of UV rays but everyone buys a UV filter because they're cheap and they're transparent and they protect your lens Worst comes to worst, if I knock this somewhere, um, if something impacts it from the front or anything like that, filter is going to break, but the lens should hopefully not get touched. So think of UV filters as like the tempered glass protector of your iPhone. It's just something that's going to give you a little bit extra protection. And well-made lenses are supposed to last your entire lifetime. Like this camera, I may upgrade it in like three years or four years, whatever, but the lens, the lens should hypothetically last me forever so you do need to protect your lenses next I'm going to talk about the mic that I'm using for vlogging now this mic will only be used 
for vlogging when i'm making videos like this where i sit down and talk i'm still going to continue to use this lapel mic uh, because it's the best solution but when i'm out and about wherever i'm vlogging on that camera i couldn't really put a mic on the camera there was no port then whenever like traffic would pass by or something it would just completely drown out my voice it really has a decent mic in camera not bad when you're close to it but if there's like a lot of noise in your vicinity it also picks up on all of that so i bought the rode video micro to go with my alpha 6500 this is also rode and i've had another rode which i don't like because it took like batteries it was really irritating but this one doesn't need any separate batteries it just works on the power of your camera you don't need to switch it on separately whenever you switch on your camera uh, this is automatically on and it's not going to give you like very broadcast quality audio or anything it's just going to improve upon uh, the audio that's getting in from your camera so like say i'm vlogging in a crowded spot this is not crowded but say there's a lot of noise around me but when i talk into the mic it's going to pick up my voice a little clearer and you guys will hear that a little better and it will do a slightly better job at drowning out all of the environmental noise that might be there easy to dismantle if i want to and it also comes with a wind muff so this is the wind muff that you get with the mic this is very useful if you're in a windy situation because mics and winds just don't go together and it's the most annoying thing so i would just just put it on like this and this is very ugly <laughs> but it's just going to not get that wind hiss What I don't like about this is this wind muff is actually called a dead cat. That's what they call it, dead cat. Why dead anything? It offends me that this is dead cat. But overall, I think this is a really good mic for out and about vlogging. When you're not really an audiophile, when you're not concerned about getting the most perfect sound, but you just want to enhance on the microphones that may already be in your camera. and just get little better audio with minimum hassle okay the next thing that i'm going to talk about is this gorilla pod i resisted getting a gorilla pod for the longest time for so many reasons i was using a little manfrotto mini tripod to vlog with a tiny little one it didn't bend and all but i liked that it was very minimalistic and it definitely upped my game because it's very useful like say if i'm in a restaurant to just be able to put down the camera on like the table and face it to me and vlog without holding it that's always a good look now the reason that i didn't get the gorilla pod earlier is cuz it's it's quite ugly like look at this i don't like this how it looks at all even though it might be useful and secondly original gorilla pods are like really expensive okay i think i paid over 5000 for this i was like why do i have to pay 5000 for this like what does it really do but when i finally got it and when i saw all of the features i realized that yes this definitely feels like it's worth the price for a number of reasons even though this looks small and stupid it can actually hold a weight up to 3 kg because it's the new gorilla pod 3k like from the latest lineup so it's very hardy the camera and the lens together this is quite a heavy setup so you want a good tripod so that it like doesn't tip over so that i can carry the weight and this thing can carry the weight with ease it has a lot of pro features is it has what you call a quick release plate and that means that uh, say i have my camera on my tripod but then i want to take it out like i just did i can just quickly like push a button push this button here and take it out the plate stays on the camera but it's separated from the tripod and say i want to just put it back and just click and put it back with minimal effort it has a ball head which means you can control uh, the angle of the camera oops losing that too soon sorry i need to get used to it but uh, i can just set up an exact angle of the camera i can even set it up like this to take like some portrait photos so there's a lot of versatility in the ball head the head pans uh, which means i don't know how i'm going to use a panning head but you can use it for time lapses or something just the the head and the body the whole thing can be turned and i can dismantle the ball head if i want and just use the bottom part 
but a lot of times when you're buying professional tripods you need to buy the base separately and the ball head separately but here you're getting this gorilla pod which you can use as a tripod which you can cling on to stuff which you can do weird and fancy things with you're also getting the ball head you're also getting the quick release plate so this has convinced me that it's a really pro grade tripod and i think i'm going to enjoy finding weird ways to use this Although I, I still I'm going to have a hard time getting over how ugly it is. And the final new thing that I bought is not really that new to me. I bought so many of it, and it's an SD card. It's really important to know uh, that when you have a good camera, you're also going to be investing in slightly better SD cards, or you're not going to be able to use a lot of the features of your camera. So I buy the SanDisk Ultra SD cards all of the time. Those are the mostly grey-looking cards with. red writing i think and i feel like that is the best grade for me sandisk has cheaper ones sandisk has pricier ones but the ultra is the one that works for me and i feel like 32 gb is a good size you don't want to buy a very big card just like that because you need to remember that with sd cards even if you buy a good brand they are like consumables they are not going to last you forever and you're going to have to change it pretty often Uh, if you don't want your card failing on you and if you don't want to be losing data so they have a life span if i'm using just one card all the time i'll use it for a maximum maximum of 6 months almost everyone i know me included has lost footage sometime or the other from a photo shoot or a video shoot because their card got spoiled or corrupted so the sandisk ultra sd card is my favorite after doing a lot of research after doing a lot of price comparison i've bought like maybe 5 6 of these over the last few years i like that they are now again easily available in india because i had to ship them from usa before and that was expensive and i think the pricing is also really really good for the quality that you're getting and that is pretty much it for all of the new equipment that i have purchased i'm going to continue using the lenses that i bought for this sony camera obviously what i did today was just to talk you through everything new that i bought but if you want to see what all the equipment that i uses on a regular basis including the lenses i already own uh you can click show more below and i have a kit a very detailed kit which has all of my equipment listed and in case you want to purchase any of those things you can directly click I'll take you to Amazon and you can buy those things. You can ask me any questions that you guys have about my equipment on the comments of this video or you can also go to my kit if you have a kit account you can ask there and I'll be happy to answer them. And if you have any requests for any specific kind of tech videos regarding photography or videography also feel free to let me know. This is a really special time of the year for me because my blog just turned 9 years old. And on the 8th of January, uh, my YouTube channel is going to turn four years old. So it's been a long time that I've been doing this. I'm really grateful to you guys for sticking around and for all of the positive vibes and comments. And I really can't wait to create a lot more content. I'm just really excited about what the future holds. I'm excited about the better quality I'm going to get from this equipment. So that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. While filming today, guys, uh, we made some new friends who were inquisitive uh, about uh, what we were doing. So now mom is showing them my channel. Then I have Himali. Have you? Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> so you watch YouTube? Yeah.